My name is Izzy Mohammed. I'm an outreach and education officer for Birmingham Markers and Heritage Service, which is based at the Central Library in Birmingham. The project's called Connected Histories. The aims of which is to try and raise awareness of the multitude of contributions that different communities have made to the Second World War that then kind of give us that shared history, hence the title of the project, Connected Histories. We met up at the youth, our youth centre, caught the bus into town, met with Izzy, and then we caught the coach into London. And then while we, while we was on the bus, we was like having a laugh and everything, as you do. And then like we had a few interviews at, at the front of the coach, like saying what what sort of things are we going to expect at this museum and I think, but because it's like a museum, you're going to think oh it's going to be a bit boring, but once we got there, it's like actually entertaining, like it's really good. We've got various collections at Birmingham City's archive services and its collections, and they cover obviously a, a great history, Birmingham's history, and more recently they also tell the story of a growing diverse city and we try to use those collections to uh, engage people and we do use those to engage people. I think in a profound way, these documents, original documents and articles, photographs, maps, whatever they might be, um, work very well in both helping to kind of tell that narrative, historical narrative, and also to uh, engage people to, to make history accessible and interesting. Has this whole experience, has it made you think differently about historic buildings or about the past. I'm more interested in it because obviously you know, I've never done nothing in school, man. I didn't even go to school. And you know, so I didn't really know nothing. And then when I've done this, man, I wish I'd done history at school, man. Has it sort of inspired you to maybe seek out places of historic interest on your own or with mates? It does. It does when, like, when, I, when I go places, man, I do look at the buildings and like, everyone else just does their own <laughs> thing. But, and I don't know, man, when I come across stuff, I read it about it, man, if I see something like in the lobby or something. So. And you wouldn't have done that before? No, I wouldn't have cared, man. In our current climate, we'll see that when there are... I always argue this, actually, that when there are budget cuts to be made, I think heritage sector uh, usually does quite badly um, because it's not seen as front line. And so what you have to do as a sector and as a service is engage in the most critical issues, and they often relate to communities that are struggling, communities that actually don't engage with our services traditionally. And so if you're not engaging with them, they're not going to stand up for your service. So by broadening out the services that we offer, including all these different groups, I mean, firstly, we do that because we believe in trying to include everybody. We believe in equality of opportunity. We, include, we believe that to have a harmonious society, everybody needs to be involved and engaged. They all need to be able to stake a claim in, in what's going on and be part of it. But beyond that even, in order for us to be able to maintain our services and our collections and to be able to develop and progress them, we have to engage everybody so that we seem to be more than just inclusive, but we seem to be playing a vital role in the everyday life of our communities. Do you think that this, this project has been useful to you, aside from history, do you think it's been useful to you in terms of how you think about the world and how yeah, you think about yeah. other people? I just... I I don't know, I thought it was just like Britain fought in the world, man. And then obviously then look, I learned that like, it was like we had countries helping us and that. And they weren't just us on our own, so. And I, would, I would, like, just felt so like, sad for the British people, but then like, you understand like, other people got hurt and it weren't their fault, so. I know. We share history. Yeah. yeah. Um, in today's kind of climate where the diversity exists, uh, with a range of social uh, concerns, problems and challenges. I think you have a lot of people growing up, especially the young, who um, struggle with who they are, their identities, and they may not be able to articulate that in the kinds of ways that we may have to discuss these themes and topics. But those problems and concerns manifest themselves in a lot of what we might regard as the social ills of the day. You know, uh, young people who are um, sort of participating in antisocial behaviour, for example. You know, those are young people who may have struggled at school and saw no relevance to school. And I think one of the things that we have to do is work using heritage, and I'm sure there's a lot of other sectors and industries and aspects of life and culture and so on, but heritage particularly, if we don't enable young people as they're growing up to feel part of the world, part of where they are, part of the bigger picture as well, then I think you plant the seeds of a lot of um, personal and social problems for later on, on in the world. But our heritage is important because ultimately it furnishes the soul. By furnishing the soul you enable, you empower the individual and you enable them to become a fully functioning citizen in the world. And that's what we're trying to hopefully achieve.